Hora de mudar. React Hora de mudar. Hora de mudar. Hello and welcome to today's Battle Mech Review. Today we're going to be looking at the L spawn for a second time because uh, I recorded that video and ComNet ate the audio. So uh, the L spawn is a media mech from the Civil War era, not the most common one, but one that has gotten quite a bit of views and eyes on it due to various uh, Tridio games. Uh, it was proudly displayed in one of the games called Vengeance, and uh, it's in uh, the massive online game that's available uh, both from the same company. And it's a, a very odd duck, not a thing that I would uh, jump on getting, but one that I understand the reason of its existence, and I understand quick ways of making it just better enough that uh, it would become a staple in the future. So let's get into it. The FedCom Civil War really stretched the resources of the largest realm in the inner sphere, well, at the time, to its very limit. As the time went on, uh, new mech designs kept being introduced to fill in roles that uh, normally would be filled by something else, just because the standard facilities that would build those uh, mechs were just not able to either keep up with the production that was required, or were, you know, not available due to various uh, reasons. This is the era that brought us things like the Razorback, the Argus, the Tanathos, and the Chimera. All designs that are very nice on paper, and then you start digging into it and you're like, yeah, shouldn't that have been, you know, an Omnimac? Shouldn't that have been a completely different design? And uh, why is it so darn expensive? Well, companies at that point really wanted to make as much money as they could and they didn't know if they were going to get those massive contracts from the AFFS anymore. So uh, you built what you could in the amounts that you could and uh, hoped for the best. Amongst all those designs, there's some that I really dislike, like the Razorback. With a name like the Razorback, I was expecting something a little bit scarier. But I do like, as an example, the Tanatos. This one is a very nice support machine. So it's not all of them are bad, all of them are good. It's really a mixed bag. One of the biggest corporations in the inner sphere remains GM. And GM's been on the good side of the Federated Suns for most of its existence. GM's basically lives off the AFFS contracts. And when they were requested to build a new medium trooper, well, that's when they brought out the L spawn. The base L-spawn is the HSN-7D, which basically tells us that the prototyping process on that thing was probably a nightmare. Very likely that it started off as, uh, let's build an Omni-Mech, then let's build a standard mech, then let's build a partial Omni-Mech, then all sorts of things just going all over the place, with the production model being Model 7. At 45 tons, the L-Spawn is meant to be highly mobile, and it does that with a GM270XL engine, and it gives it speeds of 97, 98 kilometers per hour on even ground, and even if the ground's not even, well, you're able to jump 180 meters with Rawlings 80 jump jets. Your chassis is made of Ando steel to save on a little bit of weight, about 2 tons compared to a standard chassis, and you get a meager 6.5 tons of standard plates to protect the body, which is kind of low on a medium mech, especially at that size, but not the worst thing either. It's very average on the low end, let's say. For weapons, uh, if you remember my video on the Withworth, it will uh, give you uh, flashbacks because it is very much a uh, Whitworth replacement in a way. You get a pair of 10 rack LRM, one mounted on the shoulder and one mounted in the uh, left torso. While you get also a, a trio of close range, very close range, medium pulse razors to back you up. You get two tons of reloads protected by uh, peace and prayers. And you get a garden ECM to protect you against enemy EWAR, which can be pretty useful. With no case protection on those ammo, if it goes, you go, so uh, better pray for it. And since they're all kept on the left torso, if you have someone with a targeting computer targeting you and that Guardian ECM isn't doing its job, 
it, they might be just target that pit place, unload everything they can into it, and uh, pierce the armor just to blow up your ammo. So th that's a bit of a uh, design flaw to me. So how does it compare? Well, the problem of the L-Spawn is that it's coming out in a market that is saturated with designs that are kind of similar. It was originally meant to replace the Dervish, but the DV-7D from Arcanar, which is the modern Dervish, I mean, it's fully equipped with modern technology and fancy bits and bobs. It's cheaper, it's tougher, even though it's a little bit slower. And you're gonna have pretty much the same amount of firepower at long range and at shorter range. Those SRMs are pretty useful against a uh, regular armored target. You have the Whitworth as well, which is your uh, classic. You've got just as much punch, basically three medium lasers, two LRM tons, and you have uh, much more armor. You've got eight tons normally on a Whitworth. Of course, it's markedly slower. It goes 64 kilometers per hour, but it can still jump. And you can also buy three of them for the price of a single L-Spawn. So, you know, it's kind of a deal. You've got the trebuchet as well, or the tree buckets, as one of my friend likes to call it, which is slower, but has a lot more firepower with a 2LRM-15, and you also have better armor. But this one can't jump. So all of those have their advantages. They're inconvenient. The L-Spawn kind of fits in its own category being the fastest of them all, but being the priciest of them all also causes some issues for, you know, non-military providers. If you're part of the FFS, it's not a problem to uh, just buy L-spawns by the dozen, but if you're a Merc or a uh, smaller uh, house lord, they get expensive fairly quickly. Honestly, when the L-Spawn reached production, the FFS was pretty much crippled as everybody was fighting their neighbors, everybody uh, that could have supplies stole it for someone else or uh, kept it for themselves while it, other militaries uh, were moving around. It, things looked pretty bad. Good news, though, GM's factory on Talcott were more or less unaffected at the time and built whatever they wanted for whoever was ready to pay for it. Having a mech is better than having none, so when the L-Spawn became available, well, people bought them in uh, bucket loads and uh, started using them on all possible fronts. Around the same time, we had another production model that came out, which was the P, which actually stands for production, at least that's what I heard it actually stood for. The HSN-7P takes out the EUR equipment and the jump jack to pack more weapons on. You get four ER medium laser, one in each arm and two in the right torso, and your center torso mounts a ER small laser for moral support, because that's about all it'll really do. You still have those two 10 rack LRMs, but those are augmented with Artemis 4 guidance, so you get more accuracy in the long run. This one I kind of enjoy a little bit more, I believe. Those two models were pretty much standard for a couple years, but by 3068, they decided to improve on a few things. Two of the medium pulse lasers are actually upgraded to ER medium lasers. I will say that it's strictly an upgrade in that case to actually mount Artemis guidance on the LRMs that are already there. So basically you have one medium pulse, two ER mediums, and Artemis guided LRMs. Perfectly reasonable, even though your armor is still a bit tight. On the other side of this, you get another production model, the 8P, which goes all in on the LRMs with five, five rack LRMs actually being mounted on the things. Two in each arms, one in the left torso. You get five tons of ammo as well. And that's where it really shines because with five tons of ammo, you get all sorts of specialty rounds. Follow the leader, fast cam, smokes, a, a rad. You've got so many different modern versions of this that it gets really terrifying. You get two ER medium lasers to round things up and an extra half ton of plates, which is wonderful in this case. I, I do think this one is one of my favorite production model. The one we see here replaced the LRM5 with SRM4s to make it a brawler. Kind of a tricky kind of situation, probably quite risky to make your mech like that because the l spawns not really meant to knife fight. But this with four streak, well, not for a regular SRM, 
it's going to do quite a bit of damage. 3068 also introduced the HSN9F to the world with uh, not that much acclaim, to be quite honest. This one is meant to be a knife fighter, and in order to do that, it mounts two 20 rack MRM instead of the LRMs. In order to fit that in, well, you have to sacrifice one of the medium pulse laser, the Guardian ECM, and some armor. At that point, you're protected like a light mech, trying to go as fast as, well, a modern medium mech or, you know, a normal light mech nowadays in many cases. And uh, you don't pack that much punch because those LR MRMs are extremely inaccurate to begin with. Really, they should have just taken out the medium pulse altogether, stick ER mediums in. You know, there's quite a few different things they could have done to make this work a little bit better. As the Geod raged on, GM Talcott released a brand new L-Spawn with the 10G series. This one uses a pair of MML7 to give you less long-range punch than the original, but a, a massive amount of short-range punch if you swap those for uh, SRMs rather than LRMs. And since you can easily carry boat and you'll have an okay amount of shots in boat, it's still fairly decent. To compensate at longer range, you get a, a light PPC, and one of the medium pulse lasers is removed for that, while the other two medium pulse re lasers remain in play. In order to fit all that in, though, you had to remove one of the jump jets so you can still go 150 meters, just a little bit less than the original 180. The Talcott facilities were finally targeted by the word of Blake during the Jihad, but even though that stopped mass production of the L-Spawn in 3079, you still had a new design that came out in 3081. So the design priorities there and the repair priorities led to me to believe that L-Spawns were stopped in production for a very short period. This one, though, is completely off-kilter, closer to, let's say, uh, a Marauder in a way, because each arm mounts a light PPC and an ER medium laser, and you get a full suite of EWAR equipment to fight the Blakists. So you get a Guardian ECM, a Beagle Active Probe, and a Tag Laser to just dump missiles on them. To increase mobility, you get eight improved jump jets, so you can jump 240 meters. It might be a little bit much at this point, but I'm not the one who designed the darn thing. What happens most of the time with L-Spawns is that people bring them into shop and ask me, well, can you actually make it tougher? There's two options that I basically offer to the client. One of them is very expensive and one of them is not that bad. The first one, the one that's not that bad, is pretty simple. You take out the medium pulse lasers and you replace them with standard or ER medium lasers, depending on how much money you're willing to dump. And that could even be clan ER medium lasers if you're ready to dump even more. With the saved weight, I add case to the ammo bin. So if they go, well, the mech still goes because the XL engine is gone. But the pilot is probably going to make it out alive. And an extra two and a half tons of plates. If you're uh, a little bit fancier and you've got time, I can actually get light ferrofibrous to patch everything on. And it'll give you about max efficient armor on a mech that size. It becomes, well, tougher because you've got more armor, but you still have that XL engine. The other option is far more involved. It involves replacing the XL engine with a light fusion engine instead, which increases your survivability by a good margin. But to do that, I still have to remove the Guardian ECM and I have to rearmor the whole body with ferrofibrous, adding an extra half ton on top of it. The ammo is protected by case. And as you know, we take off those medium pulse lasers because they're trash and you put them something better in like standard medium lasers or ER medium lasers instead. Mass producing support trooper is always a guarantee to cash in if you're a big military corporation. They're always in demand. They fill a necessary battlefield role that you're always going to have people wanting to fill out. So... It's a good uh, idea to have your end in that pocket. The problem is, is the L-Spawn really the right choice in that bracket? You've got things like the Enforcer, you've got the Centurion, you've got the Dervish, you've got different versions of the Unchback will probably do the same job. You've got your whole 275 Mafia. Is the L-Spawn really that worth getting? 
I am really not sure, but I think if the original design was really meant to be an Omnimech, which I strongly believe it is, I'd probably have to talk to someone at GM and look at their original design specs on them. It probably would have shown in that particular role of a 45-ton quick mech with lighter armor, but a fairly large package of uh, pod space. We'll never know because that's not what happened in real life. But still, it is an interesting thought experiment. So I hope everybody has a very nice rest of your day. I thank you for listening to me for so long, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye. Thank you.